Electricity, although very dangerous, it's great to know how it works, especially when you have absolutely zero money like me because you recently just purchased a new home. Well, not a new home, but a new home for me. Now I am so comfortable with it that I won't have anybody work on it except for me. Here's the deal. We all know that electricity can be treacherous, but with a little experience and confidence, you can save an absolute ton of money. And with every project I've worked on, I've learned so much more and more. I purchased this house from 1950 that had extremely outdated wiring and some of the splices weren't even in junction boxes. Now I'm replacing all the wires entirely. But a good thing about electricity is you don't need to do it all at once. I'm replacing a few circuits and breakers here and there, maybe a couple months apart. We want to get comfortable. I've got one general rules of DIYer. If you're not comfortable with it, don't do it. You know, when I first bought this house, called up an electrician, I got quoted $12,000. Now that I have some confidence, I wouldn't even pay four or $5,000. Gonna DIY all of it. I think DIY electricity is awesome because you don't need to throw yourself in the fire. You know, it's cool to take your time. I remember going back and forth and triple checking things. I think it's a great way to learn. Now I look at electricity as modern magic. I've got new electrical wiring going through my attic and my crawl space. I'm creating new outlets since my house is from the 50s. There's not that many outlets in each room. Hanging up televisions with no cords, no eyesores. I'm loving this, but it is electricity. So I'm rewiring my house right now, and these are my top tricks and tips that I've learned the hard way so you could save time, money, injury, and possibly even save your life. Ten. Do not mess with the electricity that's coming into your house. When I was in California, we had one of these green boxes and the wires were underground. Don't dig around that. But I live under power lines here in Knoxville and some of these power lines are just a couple feet away from balconies and side yards and stuff like that. It's pretty dangerous. Do not hang plants from these. We've got flags of our favorite sports team. Do not hang it on this. This is ex as dangerous as it gets. Do not cut these branches. Call your utilities company to come out and have them cut. I knew of a dude who tried to cut these himself and now he's got one arm. Nine. Number nine, never mess with anything barefoot. I'm not saying you need $300 Wolverine boots, but just make sure whenever you're touching outlets or maybe you have a, your panel is in the basement and maybe the concrete is moist, put on shoes. Shoes are rubber. Eight. Always have safety glasses on. Seven. Lights are your best friend, especially when you are in crawl spaces and attics. I always have my headlamp on and at least two or three lights. A lot of batteries, cordless lights. When you're on roofs or attics or crawl spaces and basements, what, uh, you don't want cords and stuff like that. Black widow spiders, sharp metals, nails coming through the roof. All of those things can sneak up on you a lot easier with dim lighting. If you're in the market for these lights, I highly vouch for them. I will put a link in the description of this video. Six. Do not be aggressive cutting into drywall unless you're doing a demo and you know everything's turned off. Don't just jam a saw or a knife in there. Residential drywall, it's either gonna be half an inch or five eighths of an inch. It's that thin, you don't need to get all the way in there. That is how I've been electrocuted multiple times in my life. Thank God, you know, my foot wasn't in a bucket of water while that was going on, but it was always me just being too aggressive. A lot of times we were doing construction. We didn't really know the house like it was my own. I know in my house where the wires are coming through the drywall or you're cutting into a floor. Set the depth of your sawzall, skill saw. Set the depth of your skill saw to like around half an inch, a little bit more than half an inch. You could have Romex running right under there. Five. Obviously check to see if the breaker is turned off before messing with outlets and such, but sometimes it could be more than one breaker. For instance, in my bathroom, I have a light and a bathroom fart fan that are on two separate circuits. So just because my voltage tester works on one live wire doesn't mean it works on everything inside this box. Get your voltage tester moving around in there. You might have three different circuits in these. Four. Number four, very important. You do not need a GFCI on every single outlet. One GFCI per circuit. And my situation's a little bit different because when I bought my house, I asked the seller for an entire rewire, which would have been about 10 or $12,000. And they countered with new GFCI, AFCI dual breakers. These are the expensive ones that are like $75, but they kept the existing old wire on there without a so I've got GFCI 
on some of my breakers and then I go back in and what what I'm adding I'll put a seven dollar breaker on there but then I'll have the first outlet be GFCI and then whatever's down from there does not have to be GFCI it could just be you know a two dollar 15 or 20 amp um, receptacle and outlet you should have gfci outlets in your kitchens and bathrooms but i have one on the breaker so in my kitchen i don't have a gfci outlet and this one's probably up for debate the guy the mentor who taught me he told me one gfci per circuit and if you have two on there they will cancel each other out defeating the whole purpose something tells me this one's gonna be up for debate in the comment section can't wait to hear the comments on this one three Stripping your wires to the correct length. I'm sure you're aware that black goes to gold or brass and then that white goes to silver, but you wanna have zero insulation screwed down under the terminal. I actually hired an electrician when I first moved out here. He did a god awful job and I looked at his work and I had to redo everything all over again. I'm gonna go hire an electrician. Sometimes it doesn't work out. I don't trust anybody at this point. This is why I do this stuff. I've been burned too many times. My truck, my house, me, myself, and Irene at this point. You do not want to have insulation under this screw. This is a big fire hazard. And you also don't want to have too much metal exposed. You don't want that to touch anything else. Make sure your wires are turned clockwise when screwing them down. That will help secure them. I use needle nose pliers too. I'm gonna to take some meat in the comment section for that too, but live your life and I'll live mine. Two. Number two, wire nuts are not all the same size. And don't reuse wire nuts. If you're taking something apart and you have to undo the wire nut, throw that away, they're too cheap. Make sure you are using the correct wire size and color. Green for ground, red for live. When you're pigtailing, just give them a good tug, tug on each of them before you put it back in your outlet box. One. This one scares me the most. This is my biggest fear in the history of mankind. Falling through an attic which is way more common than people think. The average person thinks you can just walk around up there like it's floor. It is not, it is drywall. Fortunately, I've never experienced this, but I've heard some really, really bad stories. Just think of your body parts from your lower half that could cut, rip, butterfly. I've heard really bad stories that I'm not gonna go into detail because uh, they're just too graphic, but take my word for it. When I moved into this house, the first thing I did is I went up to my attic. It was already sketchy as hell. It just had some wood up here, but it wasn't screwed down. And I, fortunately, I was able to get everything out of here, get it out of here myself without having to pay anybody. And that took me a day. And then I went back and I boarded everything up with one by six, which I kind of regret. I should have done all of it. Plywood, plywood significantly cheaper, half inch plywood. And now I can move around a lot more leisurely. Um, you know, it's obviously great for storage, but now I can get to this fan and these lights and the corners of my house for future projects. And you don't need to fall through an attic. I've been in attics before and I've just kind of like leaned back for a tool and my hand didn't hit wood and it was on insulation. You're just like, whoa, thank you. You know, that that's my one. You know, it could happen really fast and really easy without actually just, you know, falling through it like a cartoon. And then you've got a whole other project on there. Clear that thing out first. Accessibility, just getting to the outlets is half the job. Guys, I am just a DIYer. If you are not comfortable with anything, then stay away from it until you have some confidence or you wanna hire somebody that gives you peace of mind. If you would like to watch a video of me running new Romex through my attic and my crawl space, I will leave a link to that video in the comment section below. I'll pin it to the top. And if you made it to the end of this video, you are appreciated. Thank you.